Have you ever wanted to 3D print your own shoe lasts or at least get them printed locally? Did you want to do it with a working hinge? If so, watch on. This 3D Shoemaker tutorial is for you. The first step is to find a 3D model of a shoe last. These days you can find these all over the web and you can also find them on 3dshoemaker.com and the advantage of going this route is the a level of customization that's possible. So if you're on the website 3dshoemaker.com you go to designs shoe lasts and you can see a variety of uh, different shoe lasts to choose from and if you can find one that you like you select it. For instance let's look at the men's classic shoe last and now you see uh, a model type you can choose three different model types customizable parametric and static if you choose the uh, stat uh, static as the most basic type it will uh, you'll immediately be able to download um, a shoe last 3d model in both IGES and STL format that is available in the size mentioned in the description and now if you're if that size isn't something you're interested in, which probably likelihood it isn't, then you can choose customizable from the, the drop down. And the customizable, well, you have a bunch of options uh, where you can choose whatever size you want, and you can choose a very variety of levels of customization and then also uh, design adjustments. And in the design adjustments section, you're able to choose uh, that you want an alpha hinge installed and uh, there's a lead time for these files and then but once the order is processed you'll receive the files with the hinge installed and any other settings you've chosen and uh, then the third option is uh, parametric and when you choose the parametric option uh, you'll receive a, by immediate direct download a parametric file which is a, um, it's a 3dm file for the uh, commercial CAD software Rhinoceros 3d and it's used in the uh, 3D Shoemaker plugin for Rhinoceros 3D and so you can do any kind of customization that you want uh, you can do it yourself and then if you're wanting to get the, a hinge installed then uh, you within Shoemaker 3D Shoemaker.com you go to the services and you can choose shoe last hinge joint design and then you're able to get your uh, your hinge uh, designed this same service can be used for uh, getting hinges designed for lasts from third-party sources. Assuming you've uh, chosen to have an alpha hinge installed in your uh, shoe last model, here's a diagram just to help with some of the terminology that's going to be used in the uh, parts going forward. Once your order is processed, you'll receive these various parts by email and uh, they'll uh, come in an orientation that's uh, better for 3D printing to avoid uh, the need for using support material. And so you'll take these 3D models which will come in STL or IGES format and you can load them into um, a slicing software. I'm using Prusa Slicer for the slicing software because the 3D printer I'm going to be using is a Prusa i3 MK3S+. This is an ideal 3D printer for making shoe lasts. Its size is just right to print a pair of average size shoe lasts in one go. It's also a highly proven and affordable printer with a great community and is no more or less than what you need to make shoe lasts. There's a lot of info out there for how to get started with uh, 3D printing and what the various settings do. Uh, so I'm not going to get into too much depth in, in that regard. I'm just going to focus on just a few of the settings that uh, are important when uh, 3D printing shoe lasts. Uh, so the first step is to uh, bring in your design. So these are STL files that we've exported. Now we're going to bring them in. Start off with the, the last files so you can see them there. And uh, we're going to print them separately than the, um, the spring and the discs just because of the different printing settings and also filament material. For the shoe lasts, uh, the uh, suggested material is you could do it with PLA but if you're planning on uh, hammering and nails in then you're going to want to use PETG which uh, is a, quite a bit less brittle and uh, will heal a little bit more after the, the nails have been pulled out. This material it's not as uh, soft as uh, conventional high density polyethylene that's used uh, in shoe lasts uh, but it's with, if you have sharp enough nails it's not going to be an issue at all. Uh, so 
you, in the Prusa slicer, you choose the generic PETG, or if you have actually bought Prusa PETG, you can select that, or if there's other uh, some something that's already listed in there that you've purchased, the same kind of thing. And uh, a 0 0.3 millimeter quality seems to be fine when you're using a 0 0.6 millimeter nozzle. 0 0.6 mil the default is a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but this is not really high precision stuff. It's pretty uh, flexible as far as uh, you, you can still get a decent edge even with a 0.6 nozzle. And the infill, uh, you can do try a variety of infills. More important than the infill is to uh, set the perimeters. I think the default is two, but depending on the nozzle diameter, if it's a 0.6 nozzle, about eight millimeter, eight uh, perimeters works out because that gets you a wall thickness of around five millimeters, which is good for accepting nails. So of course that's going to slow you down a bit when you're printing uh, because it, the more perimeters, the more time it's going to take. And depending on the settings to you know print a full pair of shoe lasts, it might take anywhere from, uh, around 24 hours, could be plus or minus. But as I said before, if you're not playing on nailing, you can do it quite a bit faster printing thin wall PLA. And uh, if you do want to try to print faster, one setting you might uh, play around with is in the filament settings section called max volumetric speed. Uh, for some reason, this is set fairly low when it comes to PETG, and uh, it essentially determines how much uh, volume of material you're putting out. Uh, it's like a cap on how much uh, volume of material per second that is, can be put out by the nozzle. So you can increase that up. And uh, eventually, you know, you, you're going to start to have some issues if you go too high. So it's something you have to dial up gradually. So once you get your settings, OK, you hit the, the slice button. And you can, uh, on the side, there is uh, this little arrow you can drag down to have a look at uh, what the various slice sections look like. And uh, the infill uh, style is gyroid. That's the default, and that works pretty good. Uh, less issues with collisions and so on, and a nice strong infill. You could use the try various infills anywhere from 5 up to maybe uh, 25. And when you're satisfied with what that looks like, you can hit the export G-code and then save it uh, onto... Uh, an SD card and send that over to your printer or maybe you have a, a Wi-Fi printer that you can send it directly by. And uh, once you've done that, then uh, it's time to get the uh, elliptical spring and the discs done. So you go over to the 3D editor view, you can delete the part and go back to uh, wherever you've got the STLs and just drag them in. And so there they are. And I suggest using P, uh, PLA to print the uh, this hardware because it's uh, quite a bit uh, stiffer than PETG and for a spring obviously you want it to be stiff. So we've switched over to uh, uh, PLA and I'm just using a generic PLA here and still a 0 0.6 nozzle with a 0.3 millimeter quality and you could uh, you could of course change that too. You could have sped up the, the previous print as well as this print if you use a, um, a higher layer of thickness. And you want to use a 100% infill, obviously, uh, and ask if you can switch from the gyroid to rectilinear, which is fine as far for the infill pattern. And uh, so you want it to be solid, obviously you want the spring to be as strong as possible. And once you're done, you hit the slice, and then you can hit the export to save that somewhere. And you might actually want to print these in a in a batch because uh, they don't change so much from while well, uh, they don't need to change from one design to the next. Here's a time lapse video of the shoe last being printed on a Prusa 3D printer. As you can see, I'm using a build enclosure. This is important, uh, sometimes necessary when you have thicker wall thicknesses to prevent uh, warping uh, of the shoe last in separation from the build plate. Uh, the build uh, enclosure like this can be built from a lac table or a purchase from Prusa directly. Now in this final step is to assemble the shoe last after you've 3D printed your parts. Uh, you put, uh, the, the, and now first you put screws into the front and back holes of the shoe last. You want to uh, insert them all the way uh, to make sure that they pass 
directly through to the holes on the far side and to just kind of pre-thread them. And of course, instead of using screws, you could use dowel pins here. The screws I'm showing just because they're uh, easily sourced. These are number eight deck screws, uh, whereas the dowel pins uh, you want to it could be swapped in with a one eighth inch dowel pin or um, with a uh, if you get it with a larger hole, you can do a quarter inch dowel pin. And st these steel dowel pins. They're stronger and they uh, don't bend as much and you can be ordered from somewhere like McMaster Car or Fastenal. So I, now you've backed them, so those screws off so that just a tiny little, about one millimeter pokes through. So there's somewhere for the elliptical spring to catch as you insert the elliptical spring. And uh, now you uh, screw it in the rest of the way so that the elliptical spring can pivot about it. And now I'm inserting a uh, the handling screw. This is just necessary for getting it on the next um, screw so you once again that's just number eight deck screw and then you put in the um, the discs for the pivoting point and put on the back part of the shoe last use the handling screw to pull it over top of the uh, the slot on the elliptical spring over top of that one inch or one millimeter protrusion from the back screw now uh, drill the back screw the rest of the way in and you can remove the handling screw and now you can close the shoe last. Uh, if you'd use dowel pins, you could get a tighter joint, uh, but this is the stilt should be sufficiently tight. And now if you're planning on using a lasting pin, you want to uh, put in the half inch copper pipe and, or unless you are doing this with a actual uh, thimble that you've ordered, then we can spec that. And now that's in and that is the completed shoe last with an alpha joint. That's it for this 3D Shoemaker tutorial. If you found it helpful, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.